Hey, how's everyone doing? Today, I'm going to be showing you how to complete the Revelations Easter Egg solo and co-op. This Easter Egg will allow you to complete the Super Easter Egg after the main quest is finished, as long as the Summoning Key and all Gateworms are collected by doing the previous map's Easter Eggs seen here. Lucky for you, I have guides on those maps. If you have not yet done them and wish to get all the rewards for doing this Easter Egg, go complete those first. Before you start the game, I recommend bringing in the Raindrops Gobblegum for max ammos at a certain step, and I recommend bringing in the Immolation Liquidation Gobblegum for fire sales as you'll be spinning the box a lot in this map. With all that out of the way, let's get started on step 1. This will have you shoot tombstones outside of spawn in a specific order. The order is that of which the characters died in each map, so Richtofen, Dempsey, Takio, and Nikolai, or 2, 3, 1, 4. When you shoot them, a little flame will appear on all of them after about a second of waiting. When this happens, a piece of one of the tombstones will fall to the back of a jump pad and you need to find it. This is what it looks like and the three jump pads it can go to are Mob the Dead, Shangri-La, or Varukt on the first floor. When you find it, remember it for step 2. But before we move on to step 2, we need to do a couple things to get set up. These can be done later if you wish, but it's best to start earlier. Firstly, we can open up the map and turn on all the corruption engines. This is the map's form of power and how we get to pack a punch. There are four engines in total and the first one is in spawn, there's one in Mob of the Dead, one in Verrucht, and the final one is in Dreisendrak. Activate them using 500 points and kill all the enemies that appear. For doing each one successfully, you'll be given a thousand points and a portal will open behind you leading to Nocter and Toten. Go through any one of the portals that opened and run upstairs to this device. When a giant Apothecan comes by and all the lights are green from completing all the corruption engines, you'll be able to activate it to stun the Apothecan and keep its mouth open for you to go inside. When you are inside, shoot these three yellow pus sacks to make Pack-a-Punch fall down and be ready for you. To exit, go through one of these passages. Next, we can build the shield. It has three parts with each part having three possible spawn locations. The first part can be found inside Origins close to the jump pad here on this wall, going to your right on this box, or directly in front of the Wonder Fizz on this chair. The second part can be found in Verrucht on this table next to the stove, in this room in front of the stairs on the chair, or on the first floor on this pillar looking at the wall by. The last part can be found in Dreisendrak, but to get this one, anti-gravity will need to be turned on. To do this, stand on these squares surrounding the pyramid until they have a permanent glow. There are four of them, one on each side of the pyramid. When low gravity is on, it can be found here above the two statues, on the back side of that wall around the corner, or around the corner again on the opposite wall here. When you have all the parts, you can go into Noct on the second floor and build it at this workbench. The final thing we can do is get our weapons that we absolutely need. First, we need to get the Lil Arnies. These are essentially the monkey bomb, and we have to get the Apothecan Servant. We should also get the Thunder Gun. This one is not required, but it definitely helps. Like I said though, we do need Lil Arnies and the Apothecan Servant. We also need to upgrade the Apothecan Servant, but it's not as simple as throwing it in the Pack-a-Punch machine. We need to find 5 Element 115 rocks floating in the sky and shoot them with the Servant. This is best done in Noct simply by looking close to the blue sun by the shield, directly to the right of that in front of the giant rock, through this window, near this wall by looking out at these rocks, and lastly just to the left of the giant Apothecan. When you've gotten all of them, take it to Pack-a-Punch and insert it. Now we can move on to step 2, and for this we need to find and collect 3 parts to build the Keeper Protector. Each part has 3 different spawn locations, and the head can be found in Varuk on the wheelchair in front of the jump pad, on this wheelchair on the second floor outside, or on the first floor on this shelf. The crystal can be found inside Kino on this table in front of the jump pad, in Dreisendrak to the left of the pyramid looking at Kino, or on this barrel inside the statue room. The flag can be found inside Mob of the Dead to the right of Mule Kick, inside Origins on the mound to the left of the box location, or in the giant footprint on this wall. When all three pieces have been collected, you need to build the Keeper Protector, but there are four possible locations you can do this at. Don't build it until you know which jump pad the rock is at from step one. This will determine where you will build it to save as much time as possible. The four locations are Dreisendrak in the statue room, Verrucht on the second floor, Origins in the giant footprint, or Kino at the back of the stage. When you've found your location of the rock, build the Keeper Protector at the closest buildable and spend 5,000 points to activate it. He will follow you around and you need to take him to the rock and stand near the back of the jump pad. To do this, jump across the pad and wait for it to become active again, 
then jump back across and wait on top of the rock for the keeper to do a ritual. Sometimes this can be tricky and the keeper won't come close enough. Just wiggle around and move a little bit to get him in the right spot. When the ritual is started, the keeper will be very animated with his hands and you need to protect him for exactly three minutes killing zombies as they try to attack him. Or you can do what I did and had one zombie then ran across the map so the zombie would spawn on me and walk very slowly over to the keeper. When the keeper finishes the ritual, a film reel with an audio recording will drop at his feet and he will disappear. Pick up that recording and take it over to Noct, place it down here and listen to the audio or go finish getting set up if you have not already done that. Now we can start step 3. For this, get your raindrops gobblegum and come over to the giant apothecum. Inside there will be 9 ventilation holes you will need to throw Lil Arnie's into. In solo, this is hard, and co-op, this is easy. These holes are a little hard to find, so I'm gonna let the game play out so you know the exact route I take and where to find them. When you have found all nine, throw little arnies into three of them and three margwas will spawn in. You have to kill them and hopefully you'll get a max ammo or pop your raindrops to get a max ammo. Move on to your next three holes and the exact same thing will happen. Just repeat this one more time, but in all of your attempts, do not repeat holes. It has to be each one of the nine. Don't leave the Apothecan either. If you do, then you'll need to restart from the last set of three you were doing if you did not kill the Margwas. If you do this fast in co-op and have all nine Margwas spawned in at the same time, this makes it easy to just kill them and move on. In solo, I don't recommend this though, as it's very easy to die, plus you'll be able to get max ammos through raindrops so take your time. You will have to kill all the Margwas anyway to get the next audio reel, but once you do that, the reel will be found on the bridge. If you come this way from pack, it's easy to find. Go ahead and leave and place this reel on the stage in Kino, then we can move on to step four. Step four is gonna have you find six bones hidden around the map. They will only appear if shot with a packed bullet weapon, and then you need to suck them with the Apothecan Servant. Hold up, pause. This is also the point at which your Apothecan Servant will need to be packed. The first one can be found in spawn inside the church. If you look inside from the corruption engine, you will see a peculiar looking rock and you'll need to shoot it, then suck it. All right, we really need to stop and find a new way of saying this. The next one can be found in Shangri-La. Look above the stamina machine and shoot this rock, then shoot it again with the Apothecan. All right, that's better. The next bone will be found in Derizendrak. This one can be shot while wall running, so anti-grav will need to be on. Start the wall run where I do and run until you get to the wall that's curved and shoot at this bottom corner. Then you can come here next to the corruption engine to suck up the bone. The next one can be found in Verrucht next to the corruption engine on this rock. Just shoot the smaller smoothed over one and then shoot it again with the Apothecan Servant. The next one can be found in Origins outside the giant footprint on this rock and again shoot the weird smaller rock then shoot it with the Apothecan servant. The final one can be found inside of Noct on this little part of the roof. Shoot the weird looking rock, then shoot it again with the servant. I saved this one for last because if you turn around, all the bones should now be on the ground here, and if they're not, then look at all the locations again. If you do see them, great. Suck them up with the servant and Sophia's body will appear on the floor, and then suck that up. Then an audio reel will fall on the floor, pick it up and take it over to this radio in Origins on the mound. For step 5 when that last audio reel is finished with its dialogue, the ghost of Robot Sophia will be above where the body was and you need to use all four of the corruption engines to reflect lasers off of these crystals to hit Sophia. Every time you hit the crystal in the right spot, the corruption engine will not allow you to use it and automatically kick you off of it. This one is super easy and doesn't really need more explanation except that on either side there can sometimes be two, so if one doesn't work, flip to the other side and try that one. When all the lasers are trained on Sophia, go up to the ghost and interact with it. 
Sometimes you'll have to jump. After doing that, the ghost will turn physical and you'll need to follow her to the Kino teleporter. When the lights turn on in the teleporter, hold your interact button to be teleported to Samantha's room. In co-op, everyone needs to be there. Here, you'll need to pick up the Cronorium located on her bed. After like 30 seconds, you'll be teleported out and you can move on to step 6. For this step, place the Cronorium on the podium right in front of the teleporter and the four souls will come out. Immediately after that, four eggs will spawn into the map and you'll need to find all four, but you can only hold one at a time in solo and one per person in co-op. There are 16 locations in total, with there being one in each main area of the map. The first egg location can be in spawn on this barrel leading to the Origins jump pad, in front of these trash cans going to Shangri-La, in Shangri-La up against this wall, or in Shang inside the fire. The second egg can be found in Kino on this ledge, you'll have to jump to grab it, in front of the stage in between the seats, in Dreisendrack next to the Wonder Fizz inside this bucket, or inside the statue room in between two of the statues. The third egg can be found in Origins just past the giant footprint, on the mound directly to the left of the Wonder Fizz, in the tunnel leading to Mob of the Dead inside this box, or in Mob of the Dead on the right side of the Corruption Engine. The fourth egg can be found inside Baruch in the room with the green capsules, in front of the Corruption Engine in this bush, next to the Wonder Fizz, or in front of the stairs inside the rubble. When you found an egg in a location, take the egg to the Apothecan and place it here in the Stomach Acid. Go ahead and kill 10 zombies to collect 10 souls. When all the souls have been collected, you need to pick up the Gate Worm that appears. Now in each of the four main areas, there is going to be a sonar ping in three different locations within that area that you'll hear when you're nearby, so make sure you have audio turned up. But just in case, here are the locations. The first sonar ping can be found in Baruch near the fence on the second floor, near the green capsules, or in the pathway leading to the Kino jump pad. The second sonar ping can be found in Spawn to the left of Quick Revive, in front of the car near the jump pad to Shang, or to the left of this window next to the Origins jump pad. The third sonar ping can be found in Mob of the Dead on the opposite side of the room from the Corruption Engine, after leaving the cell block to Origins in front of this wall, or in the tunnels right after leaving Mob. The fourth sonar ping can be found in Shang in front of Stamina, in the statue room in front of the statues within the wall, or in the pyramid room on this pressure plate. When you find it, place down the gate worm and you'll get a purple symbol. Just pick up that symbol and now you'll have it in your scoreboard. Now if you're in solo, repeat this process three more times without repeating any areas for the egg or the sonar ping. This sounds hard and I'm sure I made it confusing, but it's actually really simple. In co-op, you'll only have to do it once per person unless you have two or three people. Step 7 is going to have you go into the Kino projector room and stand in the circle. Make sure you're completely set up the way you want, and in solo you'll be teleported to the boss arena immediately. In co-op, everyone in your game needs to be there. This is going to be the first of two boss fights. To start it, interact with the Cronorium. But before you start it, make sure you give a name to each of the symbols you see in your scoreboard or have a way of remembering them. Once started, you will see the pages being turned. At this point, it would be really good to throw a little Arnie or shoot the servant kinda close by to suck up the zombies. Each time a page turns, you will see a symbol and you'll need to remember the order in which the symbol appears. Then run to the back of the room when you've gotten all four symbols. When you get there, now you'll see the same symbols but purple cycling through and you need to interact with the symbol that appeared first in the book, then the second one, and so on so forth. Now when doing this, there will be trick symbols that can look similar to the four you have or symbols that don't look at all like the four you have. So take your time, shoot your servant, and throw your little arnies. Max ammos come pretty often during this fight too, so you should be fine. If you happen to interact with the symbol out of order, no worries, you'll be teleported back to the map and you'll need to flip around, then you should be able to come back and try again. After you activate all four symbols in the right order, you will have to kill two elemental margwas four times, but the catch is, each time you kill two, the room will change. The order is based on the elemental effect your symbols have in the scoreboard. The fire element will cover the floor and lava and you need to stand in the areas that aren't affected. The lightning element will raise walls around you and drop them blocking pathways. The best thing to do is distance yourself from the margwas for this one. The void element will send keeper skulls chasing you and many purple tornadoes will move around the arena. Just avoid all of them. Final 
finally, I don't really know what to call this element, but the room will be covered in red and black on the floor and anti-gravity will be turned on. You just need to stand in the areas where there is white light, otherwise you'll take damage. After going through all four waves, killing eight Margwas, the summoning key will fall down in the middle area of the map. Just walk through it to pick it up and you'll be teleported to the main map. Step 8 is going to have you throw that summoning key at 7 different things located in the map. If you hit them with the summoning key, they will fly back to you and if you miss and it goes outside of the map, it will teleport back to the map near you. Just look for the light in the sky similar to the mystery box. The first thing is the chandelier in Kino der Toten. The next one is the crystal ball in Shang on the left of the stairs. Next is the clock in Derizendrak, for this one stand near the corruption engine. The next one is the fountain in Verruckt to the right of the corruption engine. The next one is the tombstone in Origins on the mound just to the right of the stairs. Next is the cell in Mob of the Dead, just stand on the catwalk in front of the corruption engine. And finally, this red barrel in Noct, just look through the far left window on the first floor. There is a glitch where the summoning key can permanently disappear if you hold it while going through the portals. To avoid this, melee with the key just before going through. That's why I showed the barrel last. You can actually get it back, but you would need to down yourself as a last resort. After you hit the last one, the summoning key will disappear and you can start getting ready for the boss fight. To start this boss fight, enter the Kino teleporter and activate it. Again, in co-op, everyone needs to be there. You'll come back to the arena and can start the boss fight by interacting with one of the four altars in each corner of the arena. Then kill 10 zombies, including the Margo and Panzer. When you do this, the summoning key will be able to be picked up and you need to throw it through the Ghost Sophia. This will turn her physical once again and she'll shoot a beam at the Shadow Man bringing down his force field. At this point, lay all your firepower on the Shadow Man until he is inside the giant Apothecan's mouth, then interact with the book and the Easter egg will end playing the cutscene. But let's say you fail and can't get the Shadow Man in the mouth in time. Then just interact with an altar again and repeat the process. For completing this easter egg, you will receive the for the good of all achievement, and for completing the super easter egg, you will receive the a better tomorrow achievement. Which brings us to the super easter egg. In order for this to work, all maps from Shadows of Evil to Revelations must be completed including the giant. Upon completing the Revelations easter egg, you will be awarded 1 million XP, a couple calling cards, and that achievement. In game you will receive the RK5 as a second starting weapon, and every time you complete this easter egg after your first playthrough, you will receive 20,000 XP. I want to thank all of you for watching this guide, it took me a really long time to make, and I hope you all enjoyed it. I know that this might be confusing due to the egg step, but I promise it's really easy. Anyway, my next video is going to be the Blood of the Dead easter egg and not the Voyage of Despair easter egg, because I figured I would finish out the ether storyline first, then move on to chaos. And with that being said, I really want to thank all of you guys for reaching 100 subscribers. I know it doesn't seem like a significant amount, but it really does mean a lot to me, and I really want to keep providing more content for you guys to watch, because that means a lot to me too. Anyway, I hope you all have a great day. Bye.